Vanessa the Crafty Gemini. In this video tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to make a fun and easy project I call my snappy wristlet. Now, before we get into the project, if you're not yet a subscriber to my YouTube channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Now, let's get right into the project because this is day one of my 12 days of last minute DIY gifts. Aside from a sewing machine and some basic supplies, we'll also be using temporary spray adhesive, batting or fusible fleece, something to cut and measure your fabric with, the fabric itself, we'll be using fold over elastic for the wristlet strap, and then some type of a closure. I'll be using plastic snaps in this video, but you can also use a magnetic snap or even hook and loop tape. Cut an exterior piece of fabric to 6 inches by 12 and a lining piece to the same measurements. Then we're going to need a piece of batting for the exterior. So I like to take the fabric piece and use that as a template to cut the batting or fusible fleece. Then you're going to do the same thing for the lining piece, but this time you'll use woven fusible interfacing. And this is optional. You can leave it out if you don't have it, but I like to use it. Making sure that the adhesive is touching the wrong side of the fabric. Go ahead and give it a good press to fuse them together. If you're using batting like I am, you can use temporary spray adhesive or a basting stitch all around all four sides to combine the fabric to the batting. If you're using fusible fleece, just go ahead and fuse it with an iron. Then you want to fold this in half and we're going to cut a curve. You can draw it out or you can just freehand it, either way works. A saucer or a small dish will help give you a curve here as well and just curve it right around the side. We do this so that the curve is symmetrical. Now I'll use this one as a template to cut the exact same shape out of our lining that's been fused to interfacing. And remember that we're only doing this to one short side of our fabric strips. Place the fabric strips one on top of the other with pretty sides touching and use pins or clips all the way around. We're gonna go sew next, but we wanna mark an opening on the bottom straight side. About three to four inches is plenty. I'm gonna start on one of those sides using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Sew all the way around, going slowly around the curve to maintain a consistent seam allowance. And when we get back to the other end, make sure to backstitch as well. Next, we're gonna clip our curve. If you have pinking shears, that will go a little bit quicker. Otherwise, you can cut out little notches with the tips of some sharp scissors. Cut all the way around the curve. This will help the fabric lie a little bit flatter. And then remember to clip the bottom corners to help reduce the bulk in those areas as well. Next, reach into the opening, pull everything right side out, poke out all the fabric around the curve and the corners, and then give it a good press with your iron. Where your opening is, make sure to tuck in all those raw edges and place a few clips. It also helps if you press it into place so it stays where it needs to for sewing. Then we're gonna top stitch all the way around the entire project, making sure to catch the fabric at the opening so everything should be nice and sealed. And I'm using about an eighth of an inch seam allowance here. And you may wanna go a little bit slower since there is a little bit of bulk. Give it all another quick press, and then we're gonna measure off of the curved edge. So off of here, we wanna measure a little bit in. You can use a measuring tape like I have here, and I'm measuring three and a half inches in, so we can draw a line across. You can do it with a measuring tape, or you can also use a ruler and line up the three and a half inch mark at the center of the curve, and then draw the line all the way across your project. Now this line is simply a guideline so we know how high to fold this up for the finished project shape. But before we sew it into place, we need to cut the wrist strap. So you can make your own or you can use fold over elastic like I do. And I like to cut about a 10 and a half inch piece. Then we fold it in half and we're going to insert it on the side seam. So I like to put it about half of an inch in to make sure it gets caught in the seam. And then about three quarters of an inch down from that line we marked. Fold everything up place some clips, repeat on the other side, and sew it with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Slow down, make sure that you have at least a 9014 needle in your machine because it's quite bulky to go through all these layers, and then backstitch at the beginning and at the ends. Now I like to give it one final press to get it into shape, and we're ready to add the closure. Fold it in half, and mark the center line along the flap and then measure one inch down from the center line and make another line. At the intersection of both of those lines is where I want to make a hole to install my plastic snaps. I like to install the male end of my snap at the top flap because once that's installed, and make sure that you're following the manufacturer's instructions on how to do it, I close it and I make a mark with it so then I know exactly where I need to install the female end, which ends up being centered and about an inch down from the top of that little pocket. 
Once your snap is installed, your snappy wristlet is complete. And there you have it, a super quick and easy project that you can definitely make in no time. My snappy wristlet is perfect to give as gifts to help maybe a child or a teenager or a beginner start their hand at sewing. It's a fun little functional project. And for those of you out there that have online shops or maybe do craft bazaars and fairs, another quickie project that you can totally sell. So I hope you'll give it a try and if you do, Snap some pictures, you can tag me on Facebook, on Instagram, or post them directly to my Facebook page because I love to see what you're out there making from my Crafty Gemini tutorials. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you want to stay in touch for the next ones, make sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss out. This was day one of my 12 days of last minute DIY gifts, and that means tomorrow is day two, and I'm coming back to you with another free video project. So what did you think about that short format kind of voiced over video tutorial? It definitely makes the project and the full video a little bit shorter, quicker. I'd love to hear your comments below. Let me know what you thought of that. Do you want me to slow down or did you like the format of this video? And don't forget, the beauty of my free video tutorials is that you can always pause, rewind, or replay this video as many times as you need to.